Welcome back everybody. In this section we talk about the details of relative age. Here we'll ask a simple question. Which rock was laid down first and which rock was laid down last? Well, intuitively you might look at something like this and you would say, okay, that would make sense that maybe this one at the bottom was laid down first and this one at the top was laid down last. And you have this accumulation of these horizontal layers building upward through time. And if that's what you thought, you are correct. What we're looking at in the last slide are sedimentary rocks. These form whenever you have small rock pieces and other particles, sand, pebbles, dirt, that all accumulate and harden together to form a new rock. Now, the key to identifying sedimentary rocks is that these come in layers. So if you saw an image like this and you asked yourself what kind of rocks are these, most likely these are sedimentary rocks here. Now, that's not the only way that rocks can form. What can also happen is you can have hot, liquid rock coming up from deep below the surface of the Earth. And as that rock rises and slowly or quickly cools, it forms and crystallizes into what's called an igneous rock. So if I asked you to identify the type of rock you're looking at here and here, well, you might look at this and you would notice the little layers and say, okay, most likely this is a sedimentary rock. You would look at this and you would see, well, it's not made of layers at all. It's made of these little interlocking crystals. Probably this is an igneous rock here. But sometimes we have to look at a bigger example. Uh, this is the granite half dome at Yosemite. And at first glance, you can tell that this is not a sedimentary rock because it does not have layers. In fact, there's no real kind of internal structure to the rock at all. You'd say most likely this is an igneous rock here. Now, you might notice there are these vertical lines, these sort of stripes in the rock here. This is not the same as layering. These are called joints. Uh, these are cracks that would have come along long after the rock had formed. Now, what kind of rock are we looking at here? Well, this one doesn't look very much like anything we've seen so far, but this is an igneous rock. It is a different kind of igneous rock, though, than what we saw before. Uh, previous slide, this, we're looking at an igneous rock that cooled slowly over time, deep underground. This, not so much. This is a lava flow rock that would have cooled very, very quickly, taking somewhere near Flagstaff in Arizona, actually. Now, sometimes you take a rock and you apply heat and pressure, usually deep within the earth, and you can actually cook it doing this. Well, let's move me out of the way. And the result is something called a metamorphic rock. And what do these look like? Now, what we're looking at in this photograph is something called a migmatite. This is a metamorphic rock, something that would result whenever you take an igneous rock and you cook it subject it to heat and pressure deep within the earth. And you might notice on this one, um, it doesn't have layering exactly the way that sedimentary rocks have layering, but it does have sort of this internal pattern to it. It's not completely random. This sort of fabric to the rock is, a lot of times, how you can tell that it is a metamorphic rock. So now, if we look back at this slide, we can see the example here. Well, it's not quite the same kind of layering as our sedimentary rock, but it doesn't really look like the igneous rock either. It sort of has this internal pattern or fabric to it, but it's also made of crystals, just like the igneous rock. Sometimes, though, the important part is not the rock itself, but what's missing, what's not there between the rocks. Let's take this as an example. Uh, everything that we're looking at here is a sedimentary rock. You could look down here and you could tell because of the layers, and up here you can tell because it has these horizontal layers to it. Big surprise. But uh, what is this that you would call this sort of age gap in between them, right? Right about here. Well, this is called an unconformity. It represents some sort of missing time, a gap in the rock record here. So let's look at something slightly different here. Bear with me. Here we have something very, very dark. You might call this a lava tube, some sort of liquid rock that was injected here into this older rock surrounding it. And you can actually look and you can see these little burnt edges around this little tube of liquid rock. It's so hot actually that it burns all the stuff around it and leaves a trace that is there forever. This burnt zone is called the zone of contact metamorphism. What's actually happened is it's so much heat that it has actually turned this stuff right around the edges into a metamorphic rock. So let's review real quick. We have rocks that are sedimentary rocks laid down in layers horizontally. We have igneous rocks, which form whenever liquid hot rock, magma or lava, cools. We have metamorphic rocks. These form whenever you take another rock and you cook it. We have these things called unconformities, or age gaps, that represent missing time in the rock record. And we have this thing called contact metamorphism, 
a sort of specific kind of cooking, where whenever you have hot liquid rock that is injected into another rock, it sort of burns everything around it on the edges. Well, using the knowledge we have so far, we can start to solve some basic relative age dating problems. Figure out the order of events. For example, you would look at this diagram and you would say, okay, I know B, C, D, and E are all sedimentary rocks laid down horizontally here. And you can be pretty sure that the ones on bottom were laid down first, and then the ones were laid down in the future on top of it. Now, later, you have this, an igneous rock A, the sort of lava tube injected here into the rocks. Well, you know that B, C, and D had to be here first, and then A must have been injected in. How do you know that? Because you look at the contact metamorphism here. And because A came in and burned D, you know that D had to be there first. It isn't possible, though, to tell which is older between E and A. So you would say B, then C, then D, and then either E, then A, or A, then E. So what is stratigraphy, and why is it important? Well, stratigraphy is the science of taking rock layers, called strata, and putting them in order. It's all the rock layers themselves, and also the processes that form those rock layers. Now, the principles behind stratigraphy, the, the sort of logical methods used to put these rocks in order, were developed by people we know before. Nicholas Steno, first and foremost, James Hutton, William Smith, and others are all responsible for this between about 1600 and 1800. And we're going to look at six main principles of stratigraphy. And you should know the first number in the axis code is 4. Principle number 1 is superposition. We have older rocks on the bottom and younger rocks on top. Next is the principle of cross-cutting. So a layer of rock must be older than anything which cuts through it. Let's look at this example here first. So we have a fault, and we have this surrounding rock. Well, because the fault cuts the surrounding rock, it must be younger than that rock. We'll look at another example here. So we have this older rock, and we can see that it is cut by this rock here. This one must be younger. And because everything else here, rock number one and two, are all cut by this, maybe lava tube here, we know that this must be the youngest. You can actually look and geometrically see that it cuts across everything else here. So it must be the youngest feature. Next is the principle of lateral continuity. And lateral just means horizontal. If we look at our photo here, outside the Grand Canyon, we can see that the rocks on either side of the river are very similar. In fact, you could even say that this rock and the one across from it were originally continuous, and then later the river came in and eroded it and took the material away. You can do the same down here, and you can do the same with this rock here. Very likely, this and this are the same. That's all this means. And it's important to clarify here, unlike with the last principle with cross-cutting, here we are just talking about sedimentary rocks. The next principle is called original horizontality. All this says is that sedimentary rocks are all originally horizontal bodies. Principle number five is the principle of inclusions. So if we have a rock right here, and we have an inclusion in it, a little rock fragment which is contained in the rock, we know that the rock fragment, the inclusion, must be older than the rock which contains it. Our last principle is called faunal secession. And this one is a little bit different from the others. Essentially, what this principle says is that the fossils we find in the field occurred in a certain order. That is, that there is this evolution of species over time, that species do not repeat now and then later in the record. So, by looking at fossils and putting them in order, you can determine the age of rocks. Now, let's go into more detail on unconformities. Now, what are these? These are gaps in the geologic record, missing time. Uh, this might indicate on the ground something of uh, an episode of erosion or a deformation or sea level rise and fall, but most of all you don't know. There's some sort of missing time here. And what you can think of the story here essentially is you have deposition of sedimentary rocks slowly building up these layers, and then for whatever reason that deposition stops and rock is eroded away and weathered and generally messed with. This is our missing time. And then later, deposition resumes once more, and we keep building up sedimentary rock. Our first type is called a disconformity. So what we're looking at is an age gap or an erosional surface between two horizontal layers of sedimentary rock. 
As you might imagine, it can be very, very difficult to tell where an age gap like this exists. Fossils often help with this. Our next type is called an angular unconformity. So here we have an age gap like the one we saw earlier, but it's between angular sedimentary rocks on bottom and flat-lying, more horizontal sedimentary rocks on top. So unlike the last example where we have horizontal and horizontal here, we have angular on bottom and horizontal on top. Our last type of unconformity is called a nonconformity. Here we have younger sedimentary rocks, and they are divided from these older metamorphic or igneous rocks, older crystalline rocks, and the dividing line between them is called a nonconformity. And the sequence here looks something like this. First we have deposition of our sedimentary rocks. Next we have deformation, some kind of tilting. Next is erosion, so that comes in and strips the top part of it away. And then finally, we have more deposition of horizontal sedimentary rocks. One, two, three, four steps, and the next number in the axis code is five. Now, one place where you can actually see these three types of unconformities all together is here in the Grand Canyon. For example, there are disconformities here between sedimentary rocks, horizontal, sedimentary rocks, horizontal on bottom. Another disconformity here, lower down in the section. There is an angular unconformity here closer to the bottom of the canyon. We have tilted sedimentary rocks here, and on top are horizontal sedimentary rocks here. And finally, there is a nonconformity here at the very bottom. We have these horizontal, though they don't have to be horizontal, sedimentary rocks here, and then crystalline basement rocks underneath. The Grand Canyon also has something known as the Great Unconformity. You can see this here at the very bottom of the section. And this is uh, something that occurs worldwide, not just in the Grand Canyon, and is a huge gap in the rock record, somewhere between 100 million or even up to a billion years of time that is missing right there. For the next section, we go into detail on geologic age. 